This is Coons Ford Turf Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-41-1300. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. Well, we do have breaking news. I don't know how long ago it was, but Wayne, I got Wayne Viner in the house today, my co-host. Wayne, give everybody the breaking news on Manny Machado. Manny Machado, according to Bruce, is on the hot seat. The guy's got to run the first base when you hit the ball, Bruce. What it looked like? What was the breaking news? Well, the breaking news is that he apologized, right? And he he should have. I was there last night, and I know I called you up screaming and hollering. I've never seen anything like it. I I absolutely bases loaded, nobody out, hits a ground ball to second, and literally does not run out the ball to first. A run scored, but he could have beat the throw to first because the guy stumbled as he crossed second base, and it was so blatant. And I've never heard the booze ray down, but they did. And Wayne, I know you're in Washington, but today on the, the fan, 105.7, early in the morning and on the 10 o'clock show, the booze rained down on Manny Machado and Buck Showwater for not doing a darn thing about it. For example, I thought he should have been pulled out of the game. I thought there should have been an announcement of po- a possible suspension. You cannot not play and not hustle. I don't care how bad you are. People are still going to the game. Yeah, they're going in smaller numbers. There's no doubt about it. But people are paying their way in. They don't want to see the Orioles not trying. Losing's bad enough. But throwing in a towel is out of the question. Well, that's the unwritten fan rule. If the players don't care, how do you expect the fans to care? It was it was not, but let's move on because we got a lot of good things to talk about. But no, I but, to, but just I'm hold glad on. to see him apologize. Before you move on, I do believe that's the first time you called me and said, "Did you see this guy not make a play?" Right. Which is usually it's. Did you see the spectacular play that Manny made? But Look, when you start, in Baltimore are, are barely watching the Orioles. So I mean, in Washington, or not even turning on the TV to see. Hey, it. I was watching over the weekend again because it looked like that little life that seemed to ebb away again. And as usual, I'm looking at the standings upside down, and, well, the Orioles are in first place upside down. Yeah, by far. By far. 23 and 55, I think the record is. I mean, it's almost nothing to say. But let's get down to the good news. Well, finally, after almost about nine, ten months, maybe even longer, the University of Maryland named Damon Evans, our guy, a guy who Wayne and myself have supported from the get-go, uh, as the new athletic director for the University of Maryland. And Wayne, I'll let you, since you uh, were kind enough to come in today, tell us why he's the right guy. Tell everybody listening why Damon's the right guy. So I think the unwritten story yet, I haven't read everything, I've read a lot about this, is that if you want to have a big-time college football program, you hire a college football guy. And Maryland needs to have a big-time college football program. They need to raise the kind of revenue that big-time college football brings. Damon Evans has been the athletic director at an SEC power at Georgia. He played there. And as you said during the press conference for your minute of fame on BTN yesterday, I think you asked him, how does it work after you have a tryout for this job? That was on BTN? Yeah. Okay. So what, what, what did he say to you? Uh, he, he, it's obvious. He had a one-year trial, and, he, and that puts him ahead of everybody in the game. The coaches love him. You know that. I mean, Durkin loves him right down the line. Missy th- thought he was great, and... Missy, I kidded her afterwards. They called her the dean. I said, Missy, like, it's like, you know, it's a left-handed comp. You're not the dean. You know, you're not, like, old, you know. Talking about Missy Missy Mahar. The eight-time NCAA uh, field hockey coach. uh, The eight-time NCAA champion field hockey coach. But anyway, uh, the coaches like him. He knows the program. I think that the staff has the utmost respect for him. Uh, most of the donor base likes him a lot, and the only one that really matters is Barry Gossett, let's be real. Barry Gossett really likes him. Well, t- there were certainly a handful of top donors there at the event, which was at the hotel at the University of Maryland, which is a new hotel across the street. Pretty swanky place, isn't it? Yeah, and I didn't get my parking pass, so it was 15 bucks for an hour and, f- hour and a half. That was, But you had a good hour and a half. I had a good hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. I was so happy for Damon. I like him a lot. 
Uh, you know, I was on a few months ago on Stan's show on Press Box, supporting him when they asked me who should be. I said, this is a no-brainer. This is the guy because of what you said. The football background is just, you can't match it, what he did at the University of Georgia. At 34 years old, he right. was the first Afro-American athletic director, director in, the, in the SEC and the youngest athletic director in the SEC. The Washington Post called him brilliant at that time. This is a guy who wanted to work on Wall Street, as he told me during that press conference, and he decided to go into sports. So you have a finance guy, and I think to a person, the Maryland coaches, and almost all of them were there yesterday, said that when they talked to him, they understand a lot more about the business of sports after talking to him than before speaking to him. Yeah, I, Missy Mahog was just, she said, Bruce, when I have a, when I have meetings, the coaches' meetings with the athletic director, he's teaching me things and talking about things that I never even knew about, never understood. Now, here's a question. Which coach do you think wasn't there yesterday because he was out recruiting? <laughs> oh, well, we all know the answer to that one. Is you, you have, John Tillman was out, was not there yesterday because he's uh, scouring the country for his next uh, additions to the squad. Now, look at what Damon has done in a year, okay? First of all, uh, he served in his history. He's only 48, but he's been an athletic administrator for 21 years, which is really unbelievable that he started, I guess, when he was 27. His teams won, wow, Jesus whiz, since he's been an athletic director, a combination of 13 national championships and 21 conference titles at Georgia and at Maryland. Uh, he came to Maryland in 2014 and has uh, increased responsibilities as an executive director, chief chief operating officer, and chief financial officer. And those two things mean a lot to me. He's a COO and a CFO, and he played college football at Georgia, and I'm sure it's on the list somewhere, he was the compliance director at Mizzou. So you're talking about somebody who's got finance, compliance, and on-the-field experience. That is a tough package to beat. From what I see from Damon, it's the kind of guy who, when he speaks, everybody listens to. There's no, like, uh, and I'm not comparing anybody beforehand. Okay, and I'm not saying it didn't happen with Anderson, because I thought Anderson did command a lot of respect until his legs were taken out from under him. In, but in, Damon just has a way about him, you know, where... Oh, he can sell. When everybody walks in, I notice all the old basketball guys and all the athletic directors mm -hmm. from other schools who come, they see Damon, and it's in reverence because of his success at Georgia. Now, if you've had a guy who's been totally successful at producing a football program. Let's face it, the basketball program needs help, but it doesn't need a lot of help. The basketball program, whether it's been good or bad, still runs on it's kind of like its own because basketball is the sport at College Park, any way you look at it. But it's the football program that needs help, and well, it needs it big time. There's a lot of growth can happen on the football side, and I think this is a guy who can actually bring that to fruition. He did leave Georgia under a cloud, but it wasn't about the athletic director stuff. It was a personal issue that he had, and he, he left Georgia, went into private business, came back to Maryland, as you said, in 2014, and has a pretty good record since then. Well, so, you know, I liked what he said yesterday. He was asked a question that, uh, or he may be in his first statement, he said that, when he was first offered the opportunity to come to Maryland as like Anderson's assistant, he just about turned it down because he said to his wife, I gave you my word that I was not going to move again and move the children. And that's from the Atlanta metro area. Right. Because they were going to school. They were happy. They were, you know, in high school, I guess, or like maybe starting high school. And she says, no, you miss it. I want you to go. And they basically have lived apart for a while, haven't they? Or yes. The, she has a residence, has their house in Georgia, and he's been up here. And it's one of the That's reasons. That's not he, easy. No. And it's one of the reasons he travels so much. He still has to, to now, go sure home. Once the oldest kid is getting ready to choose a college. The youngest. The youngest kid. You're right. I'm sure they'll all move down here now. Okay. But uh, maybe not until she gets out of high school. So if you became the athletic director yesterday, and this uh -oh. is a bit of a loaded question because uh -oh. Damon has been the athletic director. Right. Uh, you've been to venues all over the place, all over the world almost. 
What are some of the things that you'd like to see if it was if all things were possible that they do? And I know one of the top things is fundraising. Yeah, fundraising has to be changed. You you know we uh, Maryland has a problem of going to the well 150 times too often. I mean, I they, they can wear out I me. Mean, I Barry Gossett. I even know what, what to say about him. He must have just mint money. You know what I mean? But you can't. He just gave twenty one million dollars. I believe so. Yeah, twenty one. Well, how many times can you go to him? What else can you do? And look, Under Armour. You know they're they're struggling now. This guy is giving Maryland so much money. It's it's unconscious. Kevin Plank has given a lot to Maryland. And uh, I think they wore out Bashadi a little bit. Okay, you know, from what I understand, they've got to expand it. They really do. And there's there are successful Maryland people all over the country, all over the world, I should say. And they have to reach out to that. And they've got to, to me, entertain, you know, bring in as many people to the camp as possible. I don't know how they're going to get past this tax problem. Okay. It's a problem, but yeah. every school in the country has it. And I think the main way you get through it is to win. I mean, I think it's that simple, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's they, just like the Orioles. Buck was talking the other day that the Orioles, uh, when they were winning, they were drawn and it was enthusiastic mm-hmm. crowds, two and a half million or whatever. And if they were winning today, I don't think it'd be much different. I think it's no. winning winning brings it. But every week or so, I'm sitting on the couch watching the Orioles going, man, I remember when they sold out every game for years. It, it just... Tomorrow's a day game. I asked you to go. Well, if I'd asked you, if I would have asked you to go, you know. In 1998? 92 or 93, yeah. when the stadium opened up, you would have said, all right, I'll be there. They used to sell out every day uh, game. Yeah. Think about that. And every night game. Yeah. I mean, they I mean, were just like, sold out. Like and people, people showed up. People clamored for the day games. People paid over face value to get in that building. No doubt. No, Or, or they bought season tickets. Yeah. You know, and, and now it's just uh, the magic is gone a little bit. And certainly, I, you know, I was thinking about on the way here about Manny. I hate to keep going back to that, but it really bothered me yesterday. You talk about the Oriole way. At, you know. Anybody who ever talked about the Oriole way and watched that last night had to be sick to his stomach. All right, the Orioles have had bad years; they had bad decade, you know. But still, I just it really it just got to me yesterday. And as far as I was concerned, goodbye, Manny. You know, let's get back to Damon Evans. Okay, so, so I'll throw one out there. Okay, uh, on the football side. Even though they said they're not going to spend any more money on the stadium because they're very committed, and I, the Cole Fieldhouse project came in, what, they need another $19 million? $20, $20 million dollars short. Just a little bit. So a couple phone calls that's, will be made. Well, wait a minute. That's not unusual. It really isn't. No. It's a, it's unfortunate. For but, a construction project right. of that size? Right. It's not unusual, no. and uh, it's not over yet either. You know, digging this hole so the players can come out, I, yeah. do they need that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't really think so, but there is a tunnel now from Maryland Stadium to but Cole Fieldhouse. Still not coming out this year. In. I don't think it's going to be finished. They got to start on it. We saw a little bit of that when we were there for the last uh, lacrosse game in the NCAA tournament. Right. So there'll be a tunnel. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be gorgeous. They brought it up again yesterday as a reason to you know, be behind Maryland. They have this top facility. I think you need a couple more scoreboards that that match up. I think you need a better sound system. And it's just money that I don't think they have. And I, there was a good quote from yesterday. What is it? That uh, dreams without money, I can't remember what the punchline was, but yeah. dreams without money is not worth much, and they know they need the money. Well, so, there's other things, too. Number one, like the Ravens have done and the Orioles are in the midst of doing, you've got to lower concessions to attract people there. You've, you've got to do to make the game day experience better, although they've tried. Uh, but what do you have to do? You have to win. You have to win a couple of football games that mean something. Right. You can't just beat up on Towson or Howard. You have to win a game that means something. On the basketball side, which you're right is the, the bell cow of this, I think it's a pretty good game day experience for college basketball venue. Oh, I think it's fantastic. I think uh, anybody who goes minus the Michigan game last year, that was an aberration. Well, Michigan scored from the parking lot. That, that was, was that game was just over. It's kind of fascinating to watch Michigan in that game. And you kind of knew they'd be have the shot to be a Final Four team. You know, and 
they were in the final four, and we'll mm-hmm. leave it at that. But uh, and Mo Wagner got picked in the first round. So I was surprised. I was a Laker. I wasn't. I was hoping he'd be there for the Wiz in the second round. Yeah, the Wiz. Troy Brown Jr. And they traded the Polish hammer, and oh. it's, it's, a, it's a redo. It's a half a rebuild in the middle of trying to win something. How do you, what do you need Austin Rivers for? Tell me. They're, they're going small ball? I don't know. I uh, Jordan. Austin Rivers? Jordan, who's been on the air here and, and writes on the on Turp Talk, said, Ernie's just got to go. If you want to see how to do this right, you look at the Caps. You want to see how to take the same situation, do it wrong, you look at the Wizards. So, you, And they're both in the same building. They're mirror images. And it's it's not a good mirror. No, it's not a good mirror. And, uh, wow. We'll talk. I want to talk a little bit about the Caps later. But anyway, all in all, when all is said and done, we're both very, very happy with Damon Evans. Um, he has fell in love with lacrosse, too. Somewhat of that urging. And you know that's I mean? your litmus test. You <laughs> wait till the last. If you didn't like lacrosse, you wouldn't have been for him. No, that's not true. <laughs> but he did. and uh, That's a bit of a needle. It's just giving you a hard time. He is He is the guy who has the vision of everything. And being in the Southeastern Conference, maybe he can step up the baseball a little bit. Maybe he could get the right people in. Maybe the chef went to left. I don't have those answers. No, this has to be about revenue sports. Right. We want everything about, on the non-rev right. side. We we have to get football up to where it matters because that's where you make the money. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know, if is Maryland receiving the $51 million this year or are they still not there yet? Not there yet. I think you have one more year to go. And they they almost broke even. There was some university subsidies and the budget now at $90, $91 million. It's one of the top overall spends in all of college sports, but it's not yet Michigan or Ohio State. So let's wait till we get the rest of that Big Ten money. $51 million a year for every team in the Big Ten. and That's kind of like Bill's producer money. It, right? it is. I heard he was a free agent. Right. Uh, he w- <laughs> won another year at the end of the contract. Right. But it's, it's, it's hard to do wrong. And yet, Durkin's got the right kind okay. of people. They've been beset by this tragedy of Jordan McNair, which has really put a a really sad part into Maryland football. And uh, I was I was glad to see that Damon talked about it first. And mm-hmm. he's a compliance guy deep in his heart. It's all about compliance to him. So. He brought in the investigation right away, no hesitation. And they should have, absolutely right. should have. Right. But you're talking about this money, and I've been and you've been across the Big Ten. It was in Iowa City. I went to Nebraska. $51 million goes a heck of a lot further in Nebraska and Iowa City than it goes in Washington, D.C. It and does, but it's a lot of money any way you look at it. It is, but right. we're going to have to take our alumni base to, as a Maryland alumnus. We have to take this alumni base. And everybody's got to give a little bit. We just don't have enough participating members of the Booster Club to make a dent. And getting that number to grow, however you engage your audience, so that there is an audience to ask for more, which you brought up, they went to the same well too often. You have to get this to 15,000 members of Terrapin Club. 8,600, 9,000, not enough. What's the most it's ever been? Probably 10,000. Right. You can't do it when you lose at football and you don't make the tournament in basketball. It has to it has to turn around. And we didn't even talk about it because it was really last Thursday night, but uh hip hip for Kevin Herter, all right, and uh Justin Jackson, but really for Kevin Herter, two point three million a year. And he deserved it and he'll be a tremendous asset. And I can't wait to see if Trey Young has that kind of success, curry like success. And if you know, Kevin Herter will have that Clay Williams kind of success. Thompson. Clay Thompson, right. Will he have that kind of... It's interesting. Well, here's Kevin Herter's rocking the number one jersey, and then you're going to be in the number one Atlanta Hawks fan in the Baltimore area no when this season comes up. So he's going to be number one? That's what. That's the jersey they're putting out. He had an 18. They now gave him the number one. Wow. Everybody had 18. So he's won... And I think Trey Young got uh, four. And the jersey that's on sale is their current point guard, Schroeder, whose jersey is now half off. So that should tell you these kids are going to play. And I think we're out of time at the moment. All right. That's the end of our first break. Let's.
Once again, here's Bruce Posner. Back here on segment two, our Coons Ford segment. And on the phone right now is the operator of Coons Ford Security Boulevard and my good friend, Dennis Kalatsis. Dennis, welcome in. Thanks for having me on, Bruce. All right. I got Mr. Viner in the house today, senior only. <laughs> oh, the younger is uh, got to be busy, right? Doing big things. Yeah, the younger guy's onward and upward. <laughs> yeah, well, I make them work. They couldn't get off to That's get right. here on time. Right, right. Somebody's got to work. <laughs> so Wayne has a Manny Machado type question to project well, to you about the football team. So go ahead, okay. Wayne. Well, this is really based on the fact that Dennis has been with sports for a long time and he runs a large organization. And for the organization that is the Baltimore Orioles, the star, the guy everybody's talking about, probably because he's going to be traded, is Manny. Mm -hmm. When your star guy ends up dogging it, and I'm sure you've seen this in business, how do you turn that around and what is the effect to an organization when the main guy starts dogging it? Well, it's it, it's tough, but they need to set the young man down. He's still very, very young. Uh, I don't know that he gets it. But somebody from the senior staff needs to sit him down, uh, perhaps a player, you know, perhaps Adam Jones, and say, look, you know, this, is, this is a really bad look for yourself, plus the organization, right? So uh, I know he wants to play a shortstop, but you know, he's, he's, he's really a third baseman, right? So that's the other part of it. So if he's trying to market himself, uh, the best thing he can do is, is, is show up every day and play hard uh, every time he steps on the field. So... It's not a good look all the way around, but somebody needs to sit him down, and he's hurting his market value, too. Dennis, uh, never mind making the team look bad. Dennis, if you had a salesman who sells 30 cars a month, and like the, the prospects would come in, and maybe it's like a, a, a wife without her husband or vice versa, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. says, you know, I'm not going to take that one. You take it. Would he be there for long? No, but again, if, if, if the guy's productive and that's the whole thing, it, you got to just find out what motivates him, what makes him tick. And, you know, how old is Manny? Is he 25 yet? Yeah, I would think so. I would think I mean, so. Close it, to it. it. You know, the, I mean, the, the male brain doesn't understand consequence until 25, so he's still, he's, still, he's still developing as a person, right, as a human being. But that's why it takes somebody he respects to sit him down and, and break it down to him in terms of what he's doing to himself. Uh, how he's short setting himself, but it, it, it's got to happen, right? It's somebody that he respects in the clubhouse needs to take him under his wing and, and say, Manny, you know, this is this is this is bad. You're costing yourself money, prestige, etc. And you got to set yourself. If you want to play shortstop in, in major in major league baseball, you, you got to behave like one, right? You got to at least put yourself in that conversation, or else you'll be traded and you'll play third base someplace else for less money, and you're going to be very unhappy. Plus the fact he really makes Buck look bad. I've got to tell you, now, I, I'm not happy with the way Buck handled it yesterday. To me, if if my star player dogged it, it I just thought about it. I was sitting with a bunch of fans last yeah. night, and the first thing I said to them, I'll never forget when Billy Martin challenged Reggie Jackson. When yeah. Reggie did the same, the same thing, I think, in the outfield, where he yeah. like barely went after a fly ball. Well, you know what? Reggie Jackson went on to have an incredible Hall of Fame career with the Yankees. Yeah, I, you got to check it. You, 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 you cannot let it go un, 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 unaddressed, uh, Bruce. You know that, Wayne. And, and you, you know, you, gotta, you have to address it. Billy Martin would have tried to duke it out with him last night. Oh, That's Billy Billy's Martin, style. Yeah. Number one, he wouldn't have been playing anymore that night. He wouldn't have been playing right. today. And he would have sent a message to the entire team. And people don't want to see anybody dogging. And now, no, man, he's leaving. He's being traded. And that's not good. A guy's here, and you're just waiting to, he's like kind of waiting to leave, waiting to yeah. be traded, you know. And, and it's not a good sign. And, and they better do something quick so they can move on. Look, and if you're a lame duck coach, as Buck is, you, you got to go down swinging. You, you can't sit there and just let the ship sink. you got to show some fight. Right, you got to show some some emotion. You have to show some leadership. Buck's a heck of a, a, a good manager. Got to sit the young man down and get his attention. Uh, you you got you, you cannot. He's got to be reprimanded some some way, shape, or form. Dennis, good things are happening out with the Ravens right now. We're hearing only positive things, certainly from you and uh, across the board. Uh, give a brief summary of why you like what's going on right now. Well, I, I, what I like about him, I mean, I like the, the Lamar Jackson. I think has energized the entire organization, never mind uh, just uh, Joe Flacco, right? He's energized the offensive line, the defense. Uh, they like what they see out of him when they go up against them, even though they know what's coming. They, the guy's electric, the most electrifying player to come out of 
college football in several years now, right? So the comparisons to young Michael Vick, you got to be kidding me. So I think that's from that standpoint, it, it, there's certainly a buzz around the castle these days. There's expectation, and uh, Joe Flacco is more energized now because he does have competition, some serious competition, and uh, he's got to audition either to keep his job or for another team. Uh, look, so they're all motivated, right? John Harbaugh and his staff, they're motivated to make the playoffs because if they don't, they risk not, not coming back. They have a lot of stakes. So this, I'm not going to say they're, they're a desperate team, but this is a very good they, – they returned all 11 starters on defense, so the defense should be better than it was a year ago. And if guys like Tyus Bowser, if they, they start playing and Tim Williams and Matt Judon continues to improve, I mean, this could be a very, very good team. Marlon Humphrey, I mean, it goes on and on and on. They have so much. Uh, they have so much firepower, and if they can stay healthy, this team can make some noise. I mean, I'd look at the schedule. Look, they should finish ten and six if, if things go the, the way they should go. That's that's a dangerous game. Looking at the schedule, and predicting a record. I have everybody to does it. I though. do it too. Everybody. I do it too. Course, Are you making a Canton trip this year for Ray Lewis? I tell you what, it's probably too late. Yeah, that, it's probably you got to fly up there. Sailed. You, yeah, yeah. You, you but, couldn't uh, get a read. You have to fly in and fly out, and that's what I would do if I went. Look, he's very happy that Terrell Owens isn't going to speak, so he's going to take up Terrell's time to for his own. Well, <laughs> it's, listen, I don't care who's getting nominated or put in. It's the Ray Lewis show this year. Uh, Dennis, Hayden Hurst, am I hearing comparisons to Grunk? And he hasn't caught a pass yet. <laughs> yeah, a little, prem- a little premature, right? Uh Let's. Uh, we we heard the same thing about Crockett Gilmore a few years ago when he was healthy in a couple of games that he flashed. So yeah, a little 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 too much uh, too soon, Bruce. So Hayden Hurst is going to be what we saw in college. Uh, my my biggest concern with Hurst is he didn't you know he didn't have many touchdowns. Uh, Mark Andrews, right, who got drafted in the third round, he's got a lot more TD in college. And of course, he played a different offense. And Baker Mayfield was his quarterback. But I, I like what they have. I think they have four tight ends that can that can flat out play. Well, you know, Vinny Serrato is on on uh, 105.7, our sister station, 10 o'clock in the morning, and he gave a report one day after being out there that was so glowing it was scary. And he's not that kind of a report. He's not that mm-hmm. kind of guy to give a glowing report. Like, he tells it like it is. And when I after I heard him talking, I started thinking to myself, you know, well, this is a guy who lives, eats, drink, you know, and football. I mean, say whatever you want about Vinny Serrato. He knows football. There's no doubt about it. No, but but the tight end position right now with Max Williams and Nick Boyle, the uh, the holdovers, in addition with Mark Andrews and uh, with the, with the, uh, Hurst. Uh, uh, look, that's a very very uh, very deep uh, position for the team. They they can do multiple things with them. You, you can put three tight ends on the field uh, at the same time, uh, maybe four if they put uh, if they have all four active for game day. Uh, they should be able to do a lot of things. But I still think the Ravens are going to be a run first football team. Uh, Alex Collins is coming back. He had a heck of a season. Kenneth Dixon's healthy, and uh, Buck Allen does give him a nice change of pace, uh, second and third round back. Their offense has a chance, as long as the offensive line gels, to be very, very good. Hey, Dennis, real quick, tomorrow your 4.30 show, I'll be, I mean, your show, Sunday Sports Voice, up the dial. I'll be on it, and I'll be do a live report from uh, Camden Yards tomorrow, okay? I will be at the Oriole game. They play a day game. Let's hope I have some good news, huh? Yeah, hopefully. I'm sure you have good seats there. Yeah, I, 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 I sit pretty well. <laughs> he does. So this I, I, this I, I, weekend brings up the Under Armour All-American Lacrosse game. Right, and uh, nice. we're, we're looking forward to that. Of course, this year is at Johns Hopkins. The game's at Hopkins, but all of the uh, festivities and the pregame stuff is all at Towson. Because Towson has the facilities. Hopkins they do. doesn't have 30 fields like uh, mm-hmm. Johns Hopkins does. So that's going to be a big day. You have... Uh, Three Terps, three uh, Blue Jays. And one Greyhound, don't And you? one Greyhound. Maybe two Greyhound. Might have added one more Greyhound. We'll nice. have interviews with them uh, on Friday. We'll be up all over the next few weeks. And there's five Lady Terps coming and one Greyhound coming. So we'll have all the non-Maryland stuff on uh, inside the creaselax.com. And, of course, all the Terp stuff on uh, terptalk.com. And also on July 21st, the Charlotte Terrapins, better known as the Hornets, come in. <laughs> hounds. 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 The Charlotte, Hor- oh, Charlotte Hounds. They got so many Terps on that team, Dennis. 
Rambo. That's funny. China Chuck. And- maybe, maybe we can all get together and do a, a live post game out there. Dennis, feel like coming well, out that, to Annapolis? Yeah, that, you can- that, that that'd be great. You know who I talked to today was um, Brendan um, Brendon uh, Mundorf. Remember okay. him? Oh, he was great. He was he's great, retired great now, guy. isn't he? He's retired, but uh, we, he and I do a lot of business together. Great, uh, great guy. Friend is a first class guy. Yeah, he was a big scorer yeah, yeah. for your Bayhawks. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he was. He was a winner. Absolutely. Dennis, what's going on at the, uh, the dealership these days? What's new? Well, Bruce, I haven't seen pavement in, in a couple months now. We have so many vehicles on the, on the lot. I forgot what the lot looks like. Uh, over a thousand brand new car trucks and SUVs, over 200 pre owned vehicles. We're busy, and we have our, uh, our Independence Day sale going on right now. Zero uh, percent, Bruce, for seventy-two months, still available, plus two grand cash back. That's the big message we have going on right now, at Coon Sport. So you have a vehicle. It's spelled the Eco Sport, but it's pronounced the Echo Sport. It's supposed to be the newest, hottest thing in small SUVs. What's that look like? That's uh, you know, Bruce and I sat in it the other day. It's got a big, a big, beautiful display screen. It's eight inches wide. Uh, it's the latest and greatest offering from Ford. It's it's very, very hot. There's a great lease deal on it right now, and it's. Uh, at a beautiful price point between twenty and thirty thousand dollars, and uh, like I said, the lease deal right now is the, probably the best deal I got going. Yeah, if you think of like a Rav Four, one of the smaller Jeeps, it's like that. Only it's new, it's different, and it's yeah. got a lot of the uh, a lot of the Tesla stuff in it. The stuff I would like. Yeah, all the, the, the all new the, fangled the, tech stuff. Yeah, real, <laughs> real great tech stuff, uh, and that's yeah. why it's called the Echo Sport. Great right. gas mileage, great car, very, very reasonably priced. Yeah, it is. It's a great, it's a great vehicle. It's getting great press, and uh, everybody that's bought one really loves the vehicle. Dennis, we shall talk to you tomorrow. And uh, what team are you rooting for in the World Cup? Oh, you know what? Uh, I don't have a favorite. You know, I just, I just don't. I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy the athleticism and the passion and the fans. Uh, I don't have, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a dog in the. Uh, in the game here. What about you guys? Oh, uh, we're we're English guys without question. Harry okay. Kane and uh, Deli Ali and, uh, and hey, they were red and white and, and Vardy they're our guys. and uh, you know they're at, <laughs> we we like them a lot. But uh, they got a big game tomorrow against Belgium at two o'clock. Dennis, it's always thanks, a lot of fun. Yeah, Dennis, thanks a lot for coming on. As always, we'll talk to you tomorrow at four thirty. Thank you, gents. Go Ravens. Go Terps. All right. With that, we'll head out to our second break. This is Bruce Posner. You're listening to Coons Four Turf Talk. This Wednesday and every Wednesday for the past 11 years. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. Talking hot dogs with Wayne Viner. And uh, you haven't had a hot dog in a while, have you? I eat one a month. Okay. All right? I mean, a lot of turkey from Atmans. That's about right. what I eat every day. Did you hear about the woman in Philadelphia that got shot in the eye for, with a hot dog from the Philly Fanatic? Really? I was waiting to tee off the other day, and it's up on the news, and they have a woman with a serious black eye, and the reporter sort of half in jest says, well, what happened? She goes, well, I got hit in the face with a hot dog, and what they do in Philadelphia, it's a big fan favor, is they put the hot dogs in the air gun, and the fanatic takes a pump and shoots a hot dog in the air. Now, I know at the Wizards games, they throw out... Shirts. Uh, shirts. They throw out, uh, not tacos, burritos. Well, they shoot hot dogs. She wasn't looking the right way, got hit in the eye with a hot dog, and they had to take her to the hospital. One time, yeah. I'll tell you a funny story, Wayne. I'm at a Wizards game, and I'm sitting about eight rows behind the basket. And if you know that the rows where the hockey rink is mm. are kind of like temporary. Yeah. Because they come and go. Sure. So they fire a T-shirt, and it's like I have to make about a two-foot jump. What year was this? Oh, my God. (laughs) 15 years ago. He could still jump back then. So, Kathy's with me. She sees the T-shirt coming. I leap in the air. It's just over my head. And when I fall back, the entire row fell over. (laughs) I did a backward somersault. Guess what? I didn't get the T-shirt. Nor did they give it to me. And they almost threw me out for causing it to happen. But I caught up and the whole row backed up. I'll never forget it. All right? T-shirts. T-shirts. For a t-shirt. jump, jumping in the air for They're a probably T-shirt. Probably wouldn't have fit me, all yeah. right? <laughs> probably Whatever. not. Leftover from five years before. Oh. But over at uh, what used to be Verizon Center, now Capital One Arena, the Capitals, going through a few minor changes. We were talking before the show started, which so now seems a long time ago. Work, what happened. That's a very interesting story. So the Capitals have a situation where they're out of cap room, and they needed to re-sign John Carlson. They need to re-sign Tom Wilson. And they, Which had, they did for eight sixty four. They did on Carlson, and the way they cleared the cap room is Brooks Orpic, who has been in Washington for five years. He wins the Stanley Cup. 
he used to be a top defenseman. Now he's he plays, but he's not the top defenseman. Had a cap hit of five point five million dollars. The goal for management was to trade him to somebody who would pay him that five and a half million dollars to make that deal go. They threw in the guy who was the number one goalie for the Caps for a little bit, uh, Grubauer. A little more than a little bit. He was the number one goalie the whole season, wasn't he? Uh, the season? Last thirty days and into the start of the playoffs before Holtby came back and took that over. Philip Grubauer, who should have been traded for a first round pick, goes to Denver for a second round pick, but the kicker is the Colorado Avalanche pick up the five and a half million dollars for Brooks Orpic. They told him when they made the deal that they were going to let him go, and right now Brooks Orpic has been released. He's a free agent, and rumor has it he might come back for the Capitals for a veteran minimum. That's that's unbelievable. And, of course, Barry Trotz is gone. We covered that on the, extensively on the Sports Maven. Tiger Woods is in D.C. this week, actually playing in the uh, Avenel Open. Now, Quicken Loans Open, correct? Quicken Loans National. It's called the National over at Avenel. Seven. Very weak field. No offense to Tiger, but it is a very weak field. Well, I'm sure they're all going to enjoy the 92 degrees of heat and humidity. It's a $7.1 million purse. And as we were saying off the air, Avenel is tough to get to, not only if you're a PGA player, but if you're a fan, you have to park at the mall that's near the golf course and take a bus over there. But I've been out there to a tournament. I'm sure you've been out there. It's Many a nice times. place. If you gather at the 17th hole, it's great. You can watch the 16th hole coming up. 17th hole is a par three over water. You can catch that. And then you turn around to the back and it's the 18th hole tee off. So you really get to see a lot in that one spot. If you're having trouble walking like yours truly is. Yep. Well, I hope that gets better. It will get better. Uh, right. It will get so, better. So uh, at least, well, you would run to first base even in that condition. I know you would. No, uh, I probably wouldn't have played, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, Germany is out. Of that the, was fascinating today. Of the World Cup. Of the World Cup. They lost to South Korea 2-0. to zip. This is the number one, two, or three team in the, in the world. They're out. And, of course, my guys, England, is in. And they play for number one or number two two seed tomorrow against Belgium. That game is virtually pick them. Harry Kane, my guy, five goals in two games. And uh, somebody named Lennard from Manchester United played out of his mind the other day. But six to one, they beat Panama. Now, remember this. The United States lost to Panama. They lost to uh, Costa Rica, and the ultimate, they lost to Trinidad. And Tobago. Wait, I think it was just one of them, though. I don't think it was a combo. It wasn't. I, I, the point, at that point, they could have lost to the bye week. Oh. They were not doing well. It was bad. I mean, they've got to straighten things out. So what do we do? We adopt the English team after watching the Premier, Premier League so much. And uh, So when does the round of 16 start up? It starts, I think, Sunday. All right, tomorrow's the final day. And I heard Belgium was pretty good. Bel- yeah, they're, uh, England's playing Belgium, but you don't know how these guys play this because the winner plays the number two seed of another conference, and the mm-hmm. loser play. You don't know who they want to play. They don't know about mm-hmm. the matchups. So there could be some... Well, well, we'll go from international football to the fact that it's about 65 days to kick off. For Maryland and Texas, and Colt McCoy's out there stirring things up. The former Texas QB, now he's uh, back up with the Redskins, starting to uh, poke fun. The Texas is coming east, and they're they're headed to FedEx Field. They're fired up about it. Let me say one thing. I heard great things about Alex Smith. All right, tremendous things. Everybody says that, and he, I think he might be one of the greatest practice quarterbacks, but the guy still hasn't won anything. He's been around for a bit. He doesn't turn over the ball, I will tell you that much. Uh, the Nationals the other day. Tampa Bay starts a left-hand pitcher in the inning. You hear about that? Gets the guy out. They bring in a right-hand pitcher. He moves to first base, the left-hand pitcher. Right-hand pitcher, I don't know what happened, gave up a single or something, and the left-handed pitcher comes back in. Ingenious. Tampa Bay has the most ingenious use of pitchers in baseball in a long time. And if we had Danny here to do a baseball history lesson, and we'll ask Bruce, last time somebody, they're starting the closer. They take him out and, and change from lefty to righty or righty to lefty. And the guy comes back the next day and actually closes the game. It's amazing what they're doing. The record doesn't reflect it. Uh, they traded away anybody who was any good. And I'm sure they'll be good in a year or two. But, uh, you know. 
Maybe the Orioles can look into uh, starting Brock and starting somebody else. I don't know, but they, you know, they've been doing a lot of the three inning thing. Three, this guy three, right. that guy three. Do you remember when the Orioles had a no hitter? I think it was in Oakland with yes, three guys. Did. Might have been more. I don't remember four that. guys. Yeah, yeah it might have been more. And and they won the game. Yep. All right. Uh, five year extension for uh, Adam Silver. Commissioner of the NBA, the only commissioner who gets cheered. Right. And right? they said we were watching the hockey draft and they booed Batman. Why did so, they boo Batman? What in the world has he done to get booed? I, probably nothing. If you don't actually follow hockey, you're not even sure who we're talking about. Batman is the uh, commissioner of the NHL. He was an NBA guy. And when the NHL was in trouble a few years ago, I think he was second or third in the pecking order. Uh, he got hired over. And Gary Batman's been, gosh, he's in the Hall of Fame for hockey now, I believe. I have to tell you something. He's done a great, great job for hockey. He really has. And I know that having Ovechkin win this title meant a lot to uh, the National Hockey League because uh, he's now like in that. There's another guy in that language for a top 10 player of all time. And Ovechkin. Well, he's got to win a little more. That's time out. Then he becomes a top five player. But right now, he's not in Crosby's league yet, all right, or Gretzky's league. But he's now in the conversation as a top tenner, I believe. And uh, give him another title, then you move up again. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, if he can get another title, he can certainly move up the caps, back to the caps here. Draft a couple of Russian defensemen. I think they're they are stocking the cupboard for a run down the road. So not only do they look good now, but that farm system's really starting to look good. Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov, yes. All right. Burakovsky. Ukrainian uh, or Russian? Czech. Czech, excuse me. Right. Ovechkin, Russian. There's Ruska. Like, Orlov, Ruska. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of... There's a lot of Vrana, Czech. But they're all in the same Vrana's area. Vrana's a Russian? He's a Czech, I a believe. Czech, okay. Yeah. You said Czech. Czech. No, right. No, I... Right. Well, Czechoslovakia. I'm sorry. And you can check that off your is list. It, is it still a Czechoslovakian? You know what? Well, we'll get Jordan to look this up uh, right. after the show. We'll be back on Saturday and give you the answer to that. Right. Please stick around. Uh, LeBron... L.A. or Cleveland? I've changed I, my mind 15 times. I I'm still was on Houston. I'm going back to Cleveland now. Yeah, well, uh, James Harden, who was named the MVP, doesn't want him. That's not a good sign. When you say you don't want LeBron, we can win without him, was his direct word. <laughs> James Harden might be one of those guys who says, do you think he can win one on five? He'd say yes. Well, but, uh, the thing about James Harden is, is if LeBron came and they won, then he wouldn't get any credit for it. Well, to score how he scores, he needs the ball. I think the bigger Houston question is, is Chris Paul have anything left in the tank? Yeah, well, who knows where Chris Paul winds up. But uh, right now I'm still thinking Cleveland for LeBron. I still think mm-hmm. that I, I just feel that this thing with this kid playing ball in high school means a lot to him, and as it does to any father, right? I mean, any parent to watch their kids play and worry about their growth and uh, should be interesting. And I don't know if he wants to get involved with Lonzo Ball's dad. Oh, probably not. But but I got a feeling if he went to Lakers, bye-bye Lonzo, all right? He could be part of that uh, quiet. How energy. good is Lon- you? You were huge on him when I this all started. Am. I still think he's great. So is this top twenty NBA? Is he the the best guy under the age of twenty one? Or well, what, what does he rookie fit? of the year? I'd rather have Donovan Mitchell. And what a classy move by Donovan Mitchell going over to uh, Peck's bad boy. What's his name? Uh, Grayson Allen. You know who Peck's bad boy was? That's from a play from. Uh, Al Jolson from the 1927 movie. Right. All right, he played Peck's Bad Boy. I think does that sound right? So, so uh, <laughs> Bill's not, Bill knows about that. Bill, right? Hey, thank you, Bill. Uh, but that's what he is. He is the bad kid, Grayson Allen. But for Donovan Mitchell to come over and hug mm-hmm. him and make him feel welcome, mm-hmm. you saw a, a smile on Grayson Allen's face like you never have. All right, and I thought uh, it was classy by Donovan Mitchell. But, of course, Simmons, Ben Simmons was Rookie of the Year, and I'm not so sure about that. Well, Ben Simmons, the biggest thing you can say about him right now is he's uh, heading towards the Kardashian camp, so that's going to be fun. What do you have planned for Saturday on the Sports Maven? Saturday, I'm taking the day off. We're we're down that day. We'll be back next Wednesday. I thought it was a quiet day, and uh, no, no Bayhawks, no real games of significance. The Orioles are playing California. But uh, and I'll probably be at that one. I might check that out at 4 and then head down to watch. Uh, the Bayhawks are home on Monday. So it's not much going on Saturday. So uh, one of those days, middle of summer, figure we take off. We'll be back, of course, next Saturday on the Sports Maven. We're out of time, Wayne. 
Thanks for coming in. It's always a pleasure. It's always fun. And we will see you next Wednesday on Coons for Turk Talk.